and I work for the Alpharetta Library um, for Fulton County and today I will be reading from a book for the Drop Everything and Read Challenge. Uh, the book I will be reading today is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paoli. Um, hopefully I pronounced that right. <laughs> and I'm going to be reading a part from this. This is actually a really great book. It's science fiction. I don't usually read science fiction but this one really caught my attention and it sucked me in, so I'm excited to share with you a excerpt from this book. <clears throat> so this is from chapter two. Kira bolted upright. She was panting and drenched in sweat. The blanket clung to her like plastic film. People were shouting elsewhere in the base and she recognized the sound of panic in their voices. Next to her, Alan's eyes flew open. What? Footsteps sounded in the hallway outside. A fist pounded against the door, and Jenna shouted, Janan shouted, Get out here, it's Nagar. Cold fear shot through Kira's gut. Together, she and Alan scrambled into their clothes. Kira spared a second of thought for her strange dream. Everything felt strange at the moment, and then they hurried out of the cabin and rushed over to Nagar's quarters. As they approached, Kira heard hacking, a deep, wet, ripping sound that made her imagine raw flesh going through a shredder. She shuddered. Nagar was standing in the middle of the hallway with the others gathered around her, doubled over, hands on her knees, coughing so hard, Kira could hear her vocal cords fraying. Fazel was next to her, hand on her back. Keep breathing, he said. We'll get you to sick bay. Janan, Alan, grab her arms. Help carry her quickly now. Nagar heaved, and Kira heard a loud, distinct snap from inside the woman's narrow chest. Black blood sprayed from Nagar's mouth, painting the deck in a wide fan. Maria Lees shrieked, and several people retched. The fear from Kira's dream returned, intensified. This was bad. This was dangerous. We have to go, she said, and tucked on Alan's sleeve. But he wasn't listening. Back, Fazel shouted. Everyone back. Someone get the extenuating circumstances on the horn, now. Clear the way, Mendoza bellowed. More blood sprayed from Nagar's mouth and she dropped to one knee. The whites of her eyes were freakishly wide. Her face was crimson and her throat worked as if she were choking. Alan, said Kira, too late. He was moving to help Fazel. She took a step back, then another. No one noticed. They were all looking at Nagar, trying to figure out what to do while staying out of the way of the blood flying from her mouth. Kira felt like screaming at them to leave, to run, to escape. She shook her head and pressed her fists, fists against her mouth. Scarred blood, scared blood was going to erupt out of her as well. Her head felt as if it were about to burst and her skin was crawling with horror. A thousand ants skittering all over every centimeter. Her whole body itched with re revulsion. Janan and Alan tried to lift Nagar back to her feet. She shook her head and gagged once, twice, and then she spat a clot of something onto the deck. It was too dark to be blood, too liquid to be metal. Kira dug her fingernails into her arm, scrubbing at it as if to scream of revulsion threatening to erupt out of her. Nagar collapsed backwards, then the clot moved. It twitched like a clump of muscle hit with an electrical current. People shouted and jumped away. Alan retreated toward Kira, never taking his eyes off the unformed lump. Kira dry heaved. She took another step back. Her arm was burning, thin lines of fire squirming across her skin. She looked down. Her nails had carved furrows into her flesh, crimson gash gashes that ended with crumpled strips of skin. And within the furrow, she saw another something twitch. Three. Kira fell to the floor screaming. The pain was all consuming. That much she was aware of. It was the only thing she was aware of. She arched her back and thrashed, clawing at the floor, desperate to escape the onslaught of agony. She screamed again. She screamed so hard her voice broke and a slick of hot blood coated her throat. She couldn't breathe. The pain was too intense. Her skin was burning and it felt as if her veins were filled with acid and her flesh was tearing itself from her limbs. Dark shapes blocked the light overhead as people moved around her. 
Alan's face appeared next to her. She thrashed again and she was on her stomach. She, her cheek pressed flat against the hard surface. Her body relaxed for a second and she took a single gasping breath before going rigid and losing a silent, a silent howl. The muscles of her face cramped with the force of her rictus and tears leaked from the corners of her eyes. Hands turned her over. They gripped her arms and legs, holding them in place. It did nothing to stop the pain. Kira! She forced her eyes open and, with blurry vision, saw Alan and, behind him, Fizel leaning toward her with a hypo. Farther back, Janan, Hugo, and Seppo were pinning her legs to the floor while Ivar Nova and Maria Elise helped Nagar away from the clot on the deck. Kira, look at me, look at me. She tried to reply, but all she succeeded in doing was uttering a strangled whimper. Then Fizel pressed the hypo against her shoulder. Whatever he injected didn't seem to have any effect. Her heels drummed against the floor and she felt her head slam against the deck again and again. Jesus, someone help her, Alan cried. Watch out, shouted Seppo, that thing on the floor is moving. Sick bay, said Fizel. Get her to sick bay now, pick her up, pick her up. The walls swam around her as she, they lifted her. Kira felt like she was being strangled. She tried to inhale, but her muscles were too cramped. Red sparks gathered around the edges of her vision as Alan and the others carried her down the hallway. She felt as if she were floating. Everything seemed insubstantial, except the pain and her fear. A jolt as they dropped her onto Fizel's exam table, her abdomen relaxed for a second, just long enough for Kira to steal a breath before her muscles locked back up. Close the door, keep that thing out! A thunk as the sick bay pressure lock engaged. What's happening, said Alan, is move, shouted Fizel, another hypo pressed against Kira's neck. As if in response, the pain tripled, something she wouldn't have believed possible. A low, a low groan escaped her and she jerked. Unable to control the motion, she could feel foam gathering in her mouth, clotting her throat. She gagged and convulsed. Shit, get me an injector, another drawer, no, the other drawer. Doc, not now, Doc, she isn't breathing. Equipment clattered and then fingers forced Kira's jaws apart and someone jammed a tube into her mouth down her throat. She gagged again. A moment later, sweet, precious air poured into her lungs, sweeping aside the curtain of darkening from her vision. Alan was hovering over her, his face contorted with worry. Kira tried to talk, but the only sound she could make was an inarticulate groan. You're going to be okay, said Alan. Just hold on, Fazel's gonna help you. He looked as if he were about to cry. Kira had never been so afraid. Something was wrong inside of her and it was getting worse. Run, she thought, run, get away from here before. Dark lines shot across her skin, black lightning bolts that twisted and squirmed as if alive. Then they froze in place and where each one lay, her skin split and tore like a carapace of molting insect. Kara's face overflowed, filling her with a feeling of utter and inescapable doom. If she could have screamed, her cry would have reached the stars. Fibrous tendrils erupted from her bloody rinse. They whipped about like headless snakes and then stiffened into razor edge spikes that stabbed out, outward in the random directions. The spikes pierced the walls, they pierced the ceiling. Metal screeched, light strips sparked and shattered and the high pitched keen of Adra's surface wind filled the room as did the blare of alarms. Kira fell to the floor as the spikes jerked her around like a puppet. She saw a spike pass through Hugo's chest and then three more through Fizel, neck, arm, and groin. Blood sprayed from the men's wounds as the spikes withdrew. No! The door to sick bay slammed open and Ivanova rushed in. Her face went slack with horror and then a pair of spikes struck her in the stomach as she collapsed. Seppo tried to run and a spike impaled him from behind pinning him to the wall like a butterfly. No! Kira blacked out. When she came to, Alan was kneeling next to her, his forehead pressed against hers and his hands heavy upon her shoulders. His eyes were blank and empty and a line of blood trickled from the corner of his mouth. It took her a moment to realize that a dozen or more spikes stitched her body to his, joining them with obscene intimacy. Her heart fluttered and stopped and the floor seemed to drop away into an abyss. Alan, her teammates,
dead because of her. The knowledge was unbearable. Pain. She was dying and she didn't care. She just wanted the suffering to end, wanted the swift arrival of oblivion and the release it would bring. Then darkness clouded her sight and the alarms faded to silence. And what once was, was no more. And that is chapter two of To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Um, it's a very, very long book, but so worth the read. Um, and I actually get a little emotional reading this part because it is really intense, but I highly encourage you to check it out and I hope you enjoyed this excerpt and uh, enjoy, uh, drop everything and read. Bye.